Fitness in Kingston, New York. Ivan, what a great gym. 33,000 square feet. Got classes, I can't even tell you how many. It's got maybe 10 or 20 classes during the day. I've been a gym owner. This is the best gym I have ever worked out in in my entire life. It's got all the weights, it's got sleds, boxing, whatever you want in your life as far as working out. This gym has it. I work out here seven days a week. I love it. Ivan, what do you think? I mean, he's not lying. I mean, it's a giant gym. You got about thousands of square feet. You got boxing. 33,000, I said. 33,000, 33, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's how old uh, Christ was when he died, 33. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, it's a lucky number. Well, listen, I love this gym. Not only does it have a sauna, great showers, private locker room. It has a private area for training if you want boxing. It has a great area for the gym, for the sled. I can just keep going and going and going. So Mac Fitness in Kingston, if you guys want to join or something like that, just click on the link above. And welcome to the art of living fearlessly. Okay, my guest here is a master, eighth degree black belt. He's from Kingston, New York. He is the epitome of the art of living fearlessly. I'm so honored to have him as a guest, Keith Bennett. Here he is, the one and only master Keith Bennett. Thank you, Art. All right. Now, I've been with Mac over 30 years myself, All right. and I have to agree with both of you. Excellent, Jim. I'm here two to three hours a day, and I see Art every day. So yes, I agree with Art, and I agree with Ivan. Thank you. I just had to put that in there. Great, Jim. Okay. okay. How did you get started in uh, martial arts? Okay, so I had a really interesting childhood, and um, it was quite abusive. So I kind of hid in the basement. I had a picture of Bruce Lee Bruce on the wall. Lee, yeah, my favorite. And there was a reason for that because of all the violence in my household at that time. And uh, I also was, you know, you could say I was out in the streets a little bit. I made a promise to my mother. Uh, I'd bring money into the house, but I was going to stay away from it as much as I could. I had a very abusive stepfather. And helped take care of my brothers and sisters and uh, bring money in the house. And that's what I did. And then when he was home, I'd hide in the basement and I had Bruce Lee, you know. If you saw the picture of Bruce Lee with all the, the cuts, yeah. you know, nunchucks, <laughs> you know. We all did. Yep. Yep. You know, and... Um, I would actually dream about it. And then I went and saw every Kung Fu movie out there. And as soon as I could, I went into the military at 17. You know, they were all happy to sign off for me. And I was happy to go uh, and tell leave us, where I was. Tell us about your business. How did you get that started? Well, first, we have to finish this. Oh, I'm almost there. Okay. All right. Went into the military, started my martial arts training in 1976 and never stopped. Okay. Yeah, and then, the year I was born, Keith. Oh, gee. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I know it makes me sound old, but I'm not really in no. spirit. Anyway, so I continued uh, to train, and um, I was leaving the military, and I was offered an opportunity with a guy named Don Southerton down in Fishkill. He had uh, Fishkill School and Newburgh School. And I went in as a program director and then uh, worked my way up as instructors and ended up helping open five schools. And then there came a time, it was time to open school, and we looked around. And wow, I found Kingston. And I like Kingston. And we found a little place in Kingston. I was there for 29 years up in Albany Avenue. And then, um, of course, I moved to my current location at 618 Ulster Avenue in Kingston, New York. And that's how I got into Kingston. Simple as that. My son actually worked out there when he was he like did. 10 years old. He yeah. did. And there's been thousands and thousands of people that have come through my doors over the last 33 years. Um, and I love it. And in the martial arts industry, uh, you know, I can't say enough about the industry itself. It's a great industry to be a part of. Uh, it's, it's, it's some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life are martial artists. And that is the truth, including, as we discussed prior, Chuck Norris. I want to hear about Chuck Norris because, like, you know, I know that you guys are friends. And when someone says they're friends with Chuck Norris, I, when I was a kid, I remember the first Chuck Norris movie I saw was, uh, oh, my God. Enter the Dragon. No, no Walker, the Texas Ranger. No. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Return and he of the gets Dra Return of the Dragon. Was Return of the first. Dragon was the first, but the first, first yeah. one I saw as a kid. Bruce Lee. Yeah. It was yeah. interesting. Yeah. We had a conversation when I was on the set about that. Oh, yeah. With Chuck. Yeah. Anyway, so the Chuck, uh, we became friends. I'm with a big consulting organization who collects our money, but also consults worldwide. And I was heavily involved with that and um, helped build schools all over the world. And so. Uh, we got to know Chuck, and he did fundraising for Kick Drugs Out of America. So they all talked to me about helping with Chuck to do that. And I said, okay, my first time doing it. 
you know, we raised, our school raised about 500 bucks and, you know, you get a certificate from Chuck and, and, um, but then I started spending time with him. Uh, I had our events in the world for the consulting organizations. And we spent time on stage. We spent time talking. And the next thing you know, uh, they said, Keith, we need you to run a, uh, raise 139000 for Chuck. I'm going, what? You only give me a couple months. That's because we're having difficulty. I said, okay. Next thing you know, Chuck and I are really getting to know each other because he did such a wonderful thing with Kick Drugs Out of America in Texas and put martial arts in every middle school down there. And oh, I was just amazing. like in awe of that. And um, I was on a, a three magazine covers. Uh, it's called the Eagle Express. And then I got invited to be on Texas Walker Ranger, an episode, by the way. And uh, uh, they wanted me up. to play a drug dealer at first, coming out of a van, fighting. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that because people think Chuck Norris is really Walker, Texas Ranger. And he's really a great guy, but he's Chuck Norris to me uh, in the martial arts. And he's a good friend. I say friend. I should say acquaintance. We've known each other for years, though. Um, and again, I was on uh, the Lucas series uh, with Walker, Texas Ranger, and I had a great time with him. And we just had fun. And we continue our friendship, you know, during Facebook. And uh, so I always like. Oh, that's awesome. Tell us about your school here now. Our school here now, um, I've moved a couple times, and we have a 3,000 square foot facility. It's beautiful inside, all traditional hardwood floors that I put in. Um, and it was interesting how that happened because, you know, back in 1996, as everyone knows, 95, IBM pulled out. So I went from financial hero to zero in the world. You know, sometimes people look at you with dollars and cents and that martial arts, and, and that bothered me. Um, so, but I stayed in Kingston because Kingston needed the help. I've always worked with homeless shelters, children's homes, soup kitchens, and I continue to do that today, and also veterans organizations. Uh, and so, as it would have it, I stayed here 29 years. Um, I had lost a lot, gained a lot, lost a lot, learned that material things aren't what is important for me. It's uh, serving people, love for my family, uh, and that's what's very important to me, and that's what we continue to strive for. That's what I teach. I'm a family school. I teach children generally from five up. Uh, their parents can train too, and they do. We have quite a few parents who train with their children. And then I have an adult program, and I have a boxing program as well. And all of it's going very well. I moved to this current location a year ago, and that was just uh, COVID. Remember COVID? Uh, yep. do. Yeah, I we do. were shut down quite a I long do. time, huh? Think, Even this I gym was shut around. down. Right, exactly. And it, yeah. you're probably right. But um, so yeah. we were closed, then we opened. We were over the, the old IBM building. Next thing I know, a couple months later, people are starting to come back. And I got a 30 day notice saying, You got to move. We're going to be turning off the lights and heat and gas and selling the facility. And I'm going, They're turning on the lights there again. Yes. New ownerships. Yeah. Well, all of us had to get out. And so I was faced with another crisis and saying, what am I going to do? So I'm used to it. I'm used to fighting for everything, and I continue to do that. And, you know, lucky me, we found the greatest facility. Uh, and, you know, I put everything out there. I risk everything and just go for it, and I did. And, you know, through faith. My faith is everything. And we talked earlier about the book that I've been writing. Right. And it's called Do You See Living by Faith? And it talks about all these different things that I've gone through from childhood to present and how you live. And you just keep on pushing through it. Don't stop. You drive just like we do in the gym. You drive through it. Yeah. Whether I've, you know, tried different things, a bodybuilding, you know, I had to try, right? And keep on trying because it's competitive and it's a new goal. Right. Keith, let me say a question. You got into bodybuilding at a, at a late age. I did. When you were in your... I was 60. 60, 60 okay. Uh, what made you get into that? Why change from martial arts to bodybuilding? And now I know that you're into boxing competitively. Uh, what made you change from one sport to the next? I love new opportunities right. and new goals and things that are hard to do. And I found that bodybuilding is an extreme athlete. It is right. so, so hard. And I wanted the challenge. And I took it on, and I'm happy I did. I loved it and hated it at the same time. You actually did two shows. I mean, I went to one of your shows. And you I've done three now. For three. You look phenomenal. Uh, I saw you in the open class, and the guy that won it was like 23 years actually, old. Actually, he was 18. 18, okay. I couldn't beat him. <laughs> Darn. Well, you got fourth place, but yeah. I was in the locker room with you, and the guy uh, that got second yeah. actually looked... 
he didn't look as good as you. I'm saying, how can this guy that got second beat Keith? But I, th I think that that sport physique, it's not body, it's physique, which is kind of bodybuilding. Well, we had the crowd, though. We had the crowd. You know, I mean, yeah, we there did. were. Yeah, we did. We had the crowd. Yeah. There man. were just. Of course, I was the oldest one there, maybe why. So. <laughs> no, you look great. I mean, you. you we had fun. Great. Uh, it was fun. Uh, unfortunately, in that show, there wasn't an over 60. I think that. In there the, wasn't an over 40. It wasn't over 40 either. I, I think that it, uh, if you went to a show now, that you'd win over 40, over 50, over 60, whatever. Uh, you know, but that's in the future. So, I know you train really hard too. So I train real hard. Tell us about your training. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Art's here, and of course, I work with Art as well. I've worked with him for years, and he's fabulous, fabulous trainer. I can't say enough about his skill. And I'm always looking for that in people. Whoever I'm working with has to be a master at the trade, and they truly have to be a master, or else I'm, I don't work with them. And Art is, and so that's you know, I hooked up with him because I was doing some things wrong, and um, he taught me how to do them right. And that's how I got so sculpted, including diet. And, um, and really, you know, that was the answer for that. Right. So, and I'm continuing um, growing. I'm working with another master in boxing. His name's Alan Nace, and whew, he is great. And um, it's another goal. And I'm gonna continue fighting and continue learning and growing in anything I can. The mind, the body, the spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's three things. Mm -hmm. Physically, I have things I'm working on. Mentally, I have things I'm working on, and my faith, I'm always working on. I think always. What, yeah. I think what's really great is, and that's the purpose of my podcast, to show people that at any age, don't stop. You can be successful at what you're doing, and you're the epitome of that because you train hard. Uh, you just don't stop. You right. said the word fearless. Exactly. Fearless is perseverance. Endurance. Perseverance, yeah. endurance. People stop out of fear sometimes because they think they can't do something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you got to face the fear. You got to push through the fear. Everyone knows I did many, many years in the military. You know, many years as a kid, hardship. And then coming out and facing business. When you own a business, you're going to go through ups and you're going to go through downs. Oh, yeah. And those downs sometimes can be down, down, down. And you can lose almost everything you have. And I have. You know, so, but then I've gained much more through my faith. And right. so the faith is first, the mind is second, and the, phys the physical part is third for me. Right. You know, but they yeah. all have to work together. Yes. Everything has to work together. You yeah. miss one, you're out of balance. And some people don't realize, well, I'm in the gym because I'm stressed out. Well, what are you stressed out about? Absolutely. Yes, I think that you can alleviate your stress by working out, but what is the underlying issue yeah. and are you facing it? Yeah. You have to face your fears. Whatever they are, you face them and do your best to overcome them. And once you do that, you live in a, it's a different peace you have. And don't get me wrong, you're still going to be throwing curveballs. I've been yeah. throwing curveballs. Well, I mean, this is for you. He sounds like <laughs> our first podcast. Exactly what we were talking about, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, absolutely. You know, well, yeah. what I'm really interested in also is that I, I completely agree with you. It's something that I've learned when I started training with art was that, yes, your fis your fitness, your physical physique, or you're working out, right? But something that I learned through art, and you mentioned what a great trainer he is, is that you also have to invest in your mind and your spirit. Correct. And one thing I noticed when I started working with art, we've been training for about, what, three, four years now? Yeah. And then I was like, wait, I'm not working out on my spirit at all. And I started in putting in practice a lot of things to like, like also work out spiritually. Mentally, I work out a lot because I have my own business. I kind of run that, so I know what about ups and downs. Well, in the martial um, arts, it's innate. Yes. It's innate. It's, it's part of what you do in the martial arts, especially at a high level. If you ever saw the yin and yang symbol, there's red, fire, water. All right? And then you become in the middle where there's a balance to have that. You need, a ball, you need all of it. Right. Okay? And the only way I can say the best way is stay connected to nature. Nature is your greatest gift and it shows you everything. And, and when you're in it in the moment, it's God's presence. It's everything you need for your spirit. I live in the woods because of it. I live in the woods. I watch my deer every day, you know, all the different animals. I watch, you know, did you ever watch a squirrel's gymnastic talent? Oh my They're God, gymnasts. It's insane. It's insane. They, they jump back and forth between yeah. trees. Yeah, I'm watching. So, yeah. so these are the things that keep me strong. But I teach this yeah. every day. And if I'm not walking the walk, why talk the talk? Exactly. In addition, being physically fit, you know, this is my temple. You know where that comes from? We have to keep the, our temple as healthy as we can. Oh, this goes back to ancient times. Correct. I mean, this is uh, this. 
I mean, it know, goes back thousands you know? of years. And so it's very important for me <clears> to <throat> keep this in the best physical condition I can to age, you know, I want to age well, but I want to be able to give and share and serve. And I'm going to continue to do that. And, you know, I appreciate this today. This is nice for the both of you. But this is also good for me to share this message for others. And I'm really excited. All this is in my book. You know, do you see living by faith? We're hoping it comes out by February, March. Uh, hopefully that'll be at the latest. And I'm hoping people, you know, I know I already have an audience on, in martial arts, but hopefully we'll have an audience for other That's people awesome. as well. Let me ask so. you a question. Uh, I know that you're into physique. Yeah. Competition now and boxing. Yeah. Do you still practice martial arts? Every day. Every day. Yeah, I'm getting ready for my ninth degree, the highest degree I wow. can go for in my That's martial incredible. art. Always finish what you start. That right. is always important. In my martial arts, the 10 hours of the faith and mental training. Mm -hmm. Always finish what you start. Doesn't matter what it is, finish it. You go to college, you want a master's degree, get it. Whatever you don't stop until you get what you want. There's hardship in the path. But once you have it, it's there. You're at the top of your mountain. You know, you see these athletes climbing Mount Everest, and my daughter, daughter-in-law to be, she just finished kill, drive, excuse me, going up Kilimanjaro. And I'm going, That's I'm watching this path. I'm watching what she's going through. She's enduring such pain and agony. But she did it. She got all the way to the top, and boy, that was it. And it's the same thing in life. Life is that journey. And many people quit and settle for mediocrity yeah. instead of where they can yeah. They possibly yeah. can be. Many people throw a fit if like Starbucks well, doesn't get their you drink successful right. successful and other people successful that they keep on going. They're, you got to live your life fearlessly. You can't, you can't be afraid of failing. If you fail, you got to keep on going. But what's your purpose? Going. What's your purpose? People have to find their purpose. My purpose is to serve. I know my purpose. I'm on the streets all the time. I've been doing it for 33 years in Kingston. I did it as a kid and I continue to do it. Hmm. That's my purpose. And also, you know what? You think for yourself. That's oh, yeah. what we're trying to teach people. Think for yourself. Do not let anybody else think for you. Right, Ivan? Absolutely. I think we discussed that in our first podcast. Yeah. It's real important that if you Especially want to be the successful, young you can't let the media or anybody else influence you on you being I'm successful. Young. Well, there's leaders and followers and the people that kind of get out of the way. Right. What do you choose to be? If you're a follower, you're in a big group and you're following. Okay. There's right. times that that's necessary to be, no, you're able to be that. But I, I tend to want to be a leader. My sons are leaders in the military. They're leaders in what they do. My other son, whether it's Muay Thai or two restaurants, they're leaders in what they do. And that is more important to me than worried about fitting into a group. I don't need to fit into a group. I need to serve my community, take care of my students, and take care of my family, my friends, and, of course, my faith and my relationship with God. Damn. Very nice. Excellent. All right. So, Ivan, we had some questions about some, uh, some of our listeners. What yeah. Ask? Um, well, Keith, uh, one of our listeners asked, one time you mentioned here at the gym that you also wear a little bit of a street fighter. What's the difference? What makes a street uh, fighter? Uh, <laughs> saying, saying street fighter, that's an interesting term. Street fighter. I, you know, maybe I use it off the cuff. I don't, I don't know that I was ever really a street fighter. I got in fights. Yeah. You know, and there's a huge difference between getting into a fight on a street and having to defend yourself or a family member or a friend and then trying to get the heck out of there, uh, that's different. There's nothing, there's a worse feeling I can tell you. It's a horrible feeling that I don't like to reinvent. Um, although there were times in the military I had s uh, similar altercations. And even afterwards, I've had issues where I've had to defend or based on some of the positions I held. You know, I was a director in the hospital for security and get services. Sometimes I'd have to put people in restraints and the, all these. I'm going to tell you, some of the violence I saw, I did not like. But you have to deal with the violence. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was security for the Elsa County Sheriff's Department and Social Services Building, sometimes I had to deal with people coming in. You know, they would get angry and a little violent, and I'd have to deal with that. I don't like that feeling. It's not a good feeling. Nonetheless, when you're presented with something, you have to face it. You have to. And you do your darndest to do as the least possible uh, uh, alter the least possible you have to I for the most part was able to talk myself out of most altercations since I've been out of the military most nice. not all um, um, and once people calm down and you get them to that level of calming down and you let them talk shout holler scream and you don't take it personal so when you do that usually you can you know calm the situation down 
usually. Not always. It depends, you know, if you're in a bar, alcohol, some of these other things that are yeah, in place. Yeah, someone could it's be not, on PCP or it's something, something like that. Yeah. yeah, I don't enjoy any of that. Um, but as far as a street brawl, anything goes. It's not like martial arts. Martial arts, is a, you compete. It's a way of life. It's not football, it's not baseball, it's not a sport, unless you do the sport application, which is more of a Taekwondo, because that's more of the sport application of, you know, or, or, you know, some of these other MMA, UFC, the sport applications, and they're all good. You know, some people ask me, what's this, what's that, what's good? This is good for me. You know, martial arts has been a great, great journey for me. I've met, again, some of the most incredible people in the world. I know people worldwide. I got back from Europe, what, a month ago? I told you I was in Europe. Had the greatest time of my life over in Europe with some of the great masters over there. And, you know, I was in five different countries with them. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. And I train still with one of the greatest grandmasters around the world. His name is Dominic Giacobbe. He oversees 22 countries. I'm one of his seniors in the world. You know, so, you know, I'm a student first on everything. Everything. Because if you remember how to be a student, you can always be a good teacher. Oh, when wow. you forget, really good. When, you, when you forget yeah. and just blah, 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 tell, 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 but you're not doing it, or you don't know how to be a good student, right? Then, then this, you're not ever going to be a good teacher, in my opinion. Right. And that's my opinion, okay? So, so I not, you know, I take that where it's at, because that's just how I feel about, right. about teaching. I'm up here. People look at me and they go, oh, wow, ooh. No. I want them to respect me, yes, but I love and respect every single person I work with and teach, and I do it from the bottom up, not the top down. You know, that's really interesting because I, I really believe that that's the way I live my life. Um, as a trainer, fitness professional, I try to live my life and share that with everybody else. I work out, I try to work out to look good, to be fit, my diet, supplementation, and in order to be a really good trainer, or a good teacher, you have to live the lifestyle. You have to. And if you don't, you're living a lie. To me, you can't it, teach anybody. But it comes down to that. it comes down to are you a good servant for me? Right. Are you a good are you a good servant? Do you get out there with the people and serve? Do you get in you know, homeless shelters, children's home, walk in the streets, helping take out bottles? I don't care what it is. Serving or going there, you go to a store, you see somebody and they're looking unhappy, you smile, hey, how you doing today? You know, I don't care what it is. Serving people at the, the, your bottom level will teach you to be as humble as you need to be in your life. Don't, I wasn't always like this. I tell you that. I had to learn. I lost every material thing I owned when IBM pulled out. Everything. My wife left with a boyfriend. Everything. I had zero, nothing, nothing in the bank, you know, not a dime. You're exactly right because I owned a gym in Saugerties and I was doing pretty well. And then when IBM left, I closed the gym. I had to. I didn't close. I had 25 students well, left I, out of 600. Well, then I went to New York City to be a trainer. And well, that's how my life started that sounds there. good. But anyway, but, but I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Ivan, tell us about Bolo, our sponsor. Well, let's not forget about Bolo CBD products, completely organic, high grade, premium quality. So simply by going to bololiving.com, the link's right there. Go ahead and uh, purchase yourself some CBD. For me, honestly, it helps me a lot with sleep, helps me a lot with stress. When I wake up in the morning, I'm kind of chilled out. Yeah. And it just, you know, and it also helps me with like nutrition. <coughs> it does give me the munchies, but not like crazy like that. It does give me some appetite. Well, you're trying to gain weight right now, right? I mean, well, I'm on the Art Driscoll like diet muscle, and muscle. I've been gaining weight. Not yeah, weight. I've been gaining muscle. muscle. Yeah, That's yeah. That's what we're training yeah. for right now. Ivan is going to be a upcoming physique uh, star in the future. And that's what we're training for. I look forward to us going together. We'll have a good time. Yeah, there we go. Well, when's your next show? Next, uh, you're supposed to do a show in November, but you kind of. Uh, canceled it uh, just because of the responsibility I had uh, going to Europe and all these yeah, other things correct. I had yeah, to, it, yeah, yeah. it became where there was so much over here and to prepare for a show you really need you know driven focus and traveling all over the world isn't going to give me driven now when I'm with all those martial arts got to eat you know my instructor's Italian got to eat you know <laughs> Yes, for sure. So, so, but anyway, in saying that, I decided to wait. So probably either April or May because, you know, I'll start another cut in January, although I'm like five, six pounds out, so I'm not really too worried about it. Right. And, um, and I tell everybody, just because you're in your 60s, 70s, I don't care. You know, there's people in their 50s that just don't keep it up. 
Get yourself in shape. You know, there's some, some great trainers at Mac. You got art. You got people around. I'll help you. I've never turned a person away. You know, let's work out. Get together. You know, whether it's here, whether, you know, you live stream it. I don't care. You know, you reach out with the phone numbers. You don't reach out. You know, you can reach out to me anytime. 845-331-0009. Might <laughs> have to edit that out. Okay, one more thing. If you want to get oh, 20% I didn't know my off no, our CBD okay. products, Bolo CBD, yeah. go to bololiving.com, put in the code AD18, and get 20% off. Or just click on the link above, and I'll take you straight there. Right. Keith, any other things you want to say? No, you know, just uh, if anybody's interested in martial arts, you know. Tell us the name of the school. Tell Keith us the address. Bennett's business Karate hours, Academy. The website. Tell okay. us everything. And where is it, Keith? In Kingston, New York. Where? 618 Ulster Avenue. Ulster Avenue. Kingston, New York. Right. My website is Kingston Martial Arts. Excuse me. Kingston NY Martial Arts.com. All right. Facebook, Keith Bennett's Karate Academy. Go to that. You'll see so much information. I communicate through Facebook to my students. Keith Bennett's Karate Academy. I also understand you have a boxing uh, school there too, right? The boxing program. I'm, we're with USA, registered with USA right. Boxing. Boxing Excellent. USA. So we're fully registered yeah. to actually have amateur fighting. Right. And uh, we're working on that. We've got some real upcoming stars coming, and they're, they're looking real good. And so as soon as I have a little bit more time with them and Alan Nace, then we'll get them up there and for some competition. You know, And I know they're going to do well. Right. I know it. Okay. All right. I want to thank Keith for coming today. Ivan, Thank do you have you any words to say? Thank you. Nothing else. I mean, we've heard a lot. I think what really uh, resonated with me was just like keeping spiritually fit as yes. well, which is something you also tell me every day, Art. So. Well, I think that Keith is the epitome of being a, a great role model for everyone, whether you're 30 years old or 60 years old or 70 years old. He's living the life that you're supposed to be living. And, uh, you know, that's it. But I think that, you know, what he's doing, his school, okay, training and everything, that's the way to live your life fearlessly, okay? So we have a great podcast next time. You're not going to want to miss it. We've got some other great <laughs> guests coming on. Uh, Keith, you were fantastic. Stay in the fight. And I appreciate, we appreciate you coming. And this, is, this guy is fantastic. And that's it. And I thank you, Ivan. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you guys. You, okay. I, you know, I'm very humbled and I'm honored to be here. I get excited and I'm passionate. It shows. And I know. It shows. But you know, this is very, very kind. So thank you. And thank you for the people that put this together. All right. Absolutely. Okay, great. And we'll see you next time. You don't want to miss our next show.